Welcome to our 144th episode of Gorilla Radio. I'm Joe Caprino. I have we have a special special guest, everyone's favorite Southerner, Dustin Bentz, joining us today. He's fired up. Hopefully, I don't know if he's as fired up as he was the other day. Yes, last night. But let's see. How's it going there, Mr. Bentz? I'm chat man. Like it grinds my absolute gears <laughs> about how the injustice that's been done to the South. I mean, how do the returning state champs not get reinvited to state duels? It's it's a shamacher. It's a sham and a mockery. A shamacher. Total <laughs> shamacher. Oh geez, we're we're going straight up. You know, you're going you're going <laughs> heavy right off the bat, aren't you? <laughs> is that like a real word? Or is that something we're just we're making up? Is a shamacher a real thing? That's that uh, shamacher is a real word. Look it up. I'm on Google. Man, you're getting educated by someone from Madison now. Hey, man. <laughs> on yeah. vocabulary. All right. Oh, geez, I gotta get these comments going yeah. so we can t- we can hear all all the the legions of fans coming here. So uh, we had to have Dustin on, man. The 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 board was going too crazy. Did you end up locking the post? Yes, I did. I uh, it was getting a little bit too heavy and. Uh, n- nothing good was going on, so I had I had to tap into my inner Mrs. Triple B and walk Joe off the ledge last night. I thought <laughs> our friendship was done for a brief second. It's been through worse. I should have grabbed. I, I was going to grab the buttons, didn't? But I uh, I was too busy grabbing my Santa hat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Nelson has a nice I, I Christmas went. tree in the background. Man, this is not fancy. You know, I have this nice Christmas tree shirt. I see my guy, fellow uh, Team State voter Jason Cook, coaches in a, a cardigan now. I'm showing unity. <laughs> he said he's currently undefeated and wearing a cardigan to coach. And I'm going to say, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone coaching in a cardigan. <laughs> that's that's a first for everything. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's first. Uh, how's it going? How's the South going before you get too riled up and excited? Best semi-state in the land like every year, year in and year out. I mean, some things don't change, and that's one thing that don't change, the Dirty South. <laughs> they don't change. Yeah. So, um, the rankings. You guys got a semi-state running into your semi-state, man. You got a, a semi-state that feeds into your semi-state. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. The Mooresville semi-state. There's five semi-states in the state of Indiana. Uh, that's tough. Uh, week. Uh, a lot of times when I'm doing the individual rankings, I have to look and be like, man, can I really rank the sixth best kid coming out of Morrisville Regional? Like, there's only four coming out of there. They ain't getting a wild card. There's no voting for the extra guy. Do you run into that with the semi-state rankings? Thank goodness there's no voting. They mess that up too. We have kids mad all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. So, uh, so Dustin's a little fired up. The team state vote went down, and. 1A, the vote was, um, who was it? It was uh, South Adams, the Starfires. Uh, Starfires. Starfires. And 2A was the Fighting Valley. X-rated, right? Yeah, X-rated's there. You know, uh, it is it is the, uh, the uh, they are the excommunicated from the northern half of, of Adams County. They're usually kind of a little wild, a little bit, you know, they've been, uh, They've been kept out of the northern part, so uh, th- that's why they're the star f- star fires. Uh, Owen Valley got two A. I think there might be a little bit. I think last year I think they were probably a little bit better um, of a vote. Uh, Greenfield Central in three A, and then Perry Meridian in four A. Um, and the big one is Columbus East got left out, defending champs, and a lot of people are upset, especially people that have connections to Columbus East. So, <laughs> go Madison Cubs and go Juniors County Panthers. I have no affiliation. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, and obviously, I mean, I'm, I think I've been pretty, pretty straightforward. I'm in that vote, and you know, I, you hear the the back and forth, and it that one was probably the hardest one, honestly. A lot of them, I think, clean themselves up, but that one was really, really difficult. And it, like it came down, and I, I know that some people have posted on the board head to head early in the season, but. Uh, it's tough because there's only one spot to vote, right? And I, we were talking off air. Like, I would like to see how it would be redrawn. Like, there, there's no perfect way to do it. 
And I think that's like the thing that people forget on the board. And like, I don't know, uh, when you guys were at your high schools, Calumet usually was pretty did well when I was there. We were in the team semi state a couple of years. And I thought the dual side of the IHSA event was really cool. Um, obviously, some other parts didn't respect it as much, and it got taken away. And I thought when the Coaches Association did this, uh, and Joe and you guys have both been in the group text, and I, I'm not always the strongest uh, proponent of it, I guess. I always like play the other side. Of it. I know me and Dane have had talks about it before. But when we do it in the spring, it's tough to know what's going to happen in the fall. And I think that coach that I, I posted it on the board. I don't know if my, my stuff got taken off, but uh, Coach Cooper and those guys do an amazing job, and they reload every year, and that speaks to the community and the program. But at the end of the day, like it could have been the other way. If we voted Columbus Easton, Greenfield Central, and Coach Holden would have the same thing. They'd be like, we beat them head to head, and. It's tough, and I, I think uh, – I know you were saying, Dustin, that, like, they had some guys out of the lineup. I know Coach Holden felt like they didn't have their best lineup. But, man, I'll tell you – and I'm not saying this about these programs because Co- uh, Coop's awesome, and Coach Holden's always been awesome to me. But I would tell you I get about 10 to 13 emails a week. Hey, I lost. I should still be ranked. I was sick or I was tired or I was hurt or it snowed and I need the train. <laughs> And I have to kind of like wade through that a little bit. And I, if we, we took that in the court, I think everyone could say that, you know? Man, it's weird. It's like wrestling the different beasts because, you know, like football, you prep for like one game a week and you're going to put your best dudes out there. But in the grand scheme of things, a five, six way wrestling multiple times, like, you know, you're going to maybe sometimes move kids around or do what you can't. It's, you know, it's almost like we're encouraging the old college football system of let's beat everybody 84 to nothing. And yeah. run all the scores up as much as possible if you want to have a shot at getting in team duels. That's a terrible message to send, in my opinion. Uh, so, like, and I think we also talked about maybe waiting and do both invitations in the you know fall when teams are kind of locked in. Because let's be honest, like I'm not going to throw any teams under the bus, but there's teams that got in now that shouldn't be there now, and it's, mm-hmm. we're not nobody's going to take it away from them, obviously. But you know, so there has yeah. to be. A, and it, we're always going to sit here and say there has to be a better way. I get it. Like the guys do a great job, and I bust their chops all the time, and Joe and Dane both get mad at me a lot because I bust chops. And, but, I mean, 50% of it's having fun. And 50% of it is, you know, I'm the guy that's always going to say, and if we switched it, then I would be the guy saying, well, what's a different way we can do it? You know, like, let's not be status quo. Let's keep working on ways to improve things. So I'd always be that guy, whether, like, if Madison got in, I'd be that guy. You know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of how it is for me. So Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, the system for what we have to deal with, it is very good. Uh, the prediction – the, the formula, I don't understand it, and there's only one person that does. and um, But at the same time, I think it does a pretty solid job. If I mean, there, there's a, you can't – you can only predict so much, you know, what will happen. You know, kids transfer, kids get hurt, kids don't come out. You know, what what happened in February, now you, we're looking in December, January. You know, a year later, 11 months later, what's the team going to look like? I think it does a pretty good job, but I think – I definitely think if they – it might be time to just scrap that vote in the spring and say, hey, let's do two. Um, last couple of years they've done – they've had to do two. Last year, 3A, um, one of the teams dropped out and said, hey, we're, we're not going to be competitive um, as, as much as we thought we would be, so let's – you know, we're going to back out. And it helped two teams get in. And then obviously during the COVID year we had a couple teams get in, and I think it's it helped. It kind of showed, especially at the 3A level. I think the other levels – 3A is a little bit harder to predict because you have their good kids, but they also have a lot of good solid backups, especially at programs like like, like a Columbus East, like a Greenfield Central, like a Terre Haute South. Those teams bring in a lot of good backups that, you know, will be riding that might, you know, or are going to step in the lineup. I mean, I know Cooper has, what, two or three guys that placed it at a freshman, sophomore state that stepped in the lineup for the first time this year. So, yeah. Um, and that that's hard to you can't you can't put points with those kids because they haven't wrestled varsity, so that's one of those th- crazy things that I mean, at three A I think is one of the harder ones. The other ones the other votes were fairly cut and dry from what I gathered. Yeah, I think uh, and, and even to that like it's such a good system, and like I've been on here and obviously like one of my favorite posts ever was the. Um, 
the post with uh, uh, Harrison a couple years ago. <laughs> like, this is literally my favorite post ever. I, I tend to like look that up. Um, and I've been same seat as Dustin and kind of saying like I don't understand this, but that of all the schools, we're basically debating like maybe five. Right, is is pretty amazing. Um, I, I think the really cool thing about this event is they're very open. We're not generally an open community of like taking in uh, suggestions. Like we've been trying to get wrestlebacks for years, right? We don't have. There's no good way to put it. But uh, the IHSWCA and those guys that run this have been very open, and they listened, and they said, "Okay, we can do this. We can do a vote, and we can do." Uh, different classes, we can expand the classes. Um, I think that was one of the things in there. Uh, and, uh, and I know Joe um, Butler was saying, well, you know, eight and eight, but that's a huge uh, representation of the state already, like by percentage. And I know like you can, anyone can make numbers do anything, on, so. but like to my inner- more wrestling. And I, it's kind of talking to the Maryville guys. I, I still don't think they're going to accept. They're like, well, get those guys to accept. Like, yeah, I can't make them. I think they would do it, but I think it's like a overall, like they can't get their school to accept it either, you know. But <clears throat> it's it's an incredibly tough thing, you know. I actually got done. I didn't vote the way maybe uh, everyone else had voted when we did it, and I'm not gonna like say I. I'll, I'll tell Dustin who I voted for, but I'm not gonna tell everybody who I voted for. <laughs> but um, at the end of the day. Like, you hang up that call, and you're like, man, there's going to be, like, an entire community that's going to be upset. Like, like when you do the rankings, maybe you got, like, a couple parents, maybe they're friends and aunts, and they're like, well, I don't understand why I can't be ranked number 20. Like, well, they only invite 16 kids to state, and we're kind of doing it as, like, a nice nod, like, you know, hey, gotcha. But, like, there's entire communities that are going to be upset that, like, that changes a lot of stuff. And we were, we were talking, like, Columbia City, um, what was last year, right? Yeah, Columbia they City. Ended up drawing. Yeah. And, and and who knows, maybe that could happen again. I don't know. But I think uh I mean you're always looking for better matches, I guess, but I, I thought uh Columbus City should have been in. I, I mean it's tough, but also I think Greenfield Central should be in too. And I don't know if there's an easy way to do it. I think I put out there like cool, let them wrestle the two last seeds, wrestle their way into the tournament. Um but they're also not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think, I mean, either of those would be eight seeds anyway. So it'd be interesting. I mean, it'll be, it'll work itself out. It's just one of those things that they, they have done a good job of modifying it. I mean, when they originally went into four classes and they were going to go eight at one and two A, there was an uproar <laughs> of epic proportions. And, you know, a couple of weeks later, they're like, hey, we're going to do 12 there. We're going to still do 12 at, at the one and two A level. And, eight at uh three and four a and go from there and you know they, they do a good job of you know and changes and i know you you've been on some texts say hey maybe we should do that in the in the fall or in the winter in the december get two votes and you know then it then you have to be on one less call <laughs> and try to hear what it's sometimes means. i just gotta email those in man these guys everyone i mean everyone has kids and how life's going now um <laughs> What was it a couple of years ago? Was it Cathedral? They had graduated a lot and they didn't get invited back and then they won Team State the next year? Yeah, they didn't get invited. They 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 took they were not happy about not getting invited in. And that was when they had the two the vote ins were in the spring. So they knew in the spring if they were gonna be voted in and they didn't they didn't take a liking to that very well. <laughs> and, nah. and that that's one of those things that if there would have been a vote and I can't remember who got in, um it's been too long, but I, they should have been in, and they beat a couple. They beat a couple teams. I'm pretty positive that were in, and they kind of proved that they should. They were probably a top two or three team there. So, um, but I, I think the voting, you know, as long as people are able to, you know, manipulate their schedules, and I think most of those teams kind of know ahead of time, and they kind of will manipulate, you know, make sure that they have that opening or the ability to to flex you know that some points there for for their varsity to go to team state it is a you know the good thing is people are very passionate about it people care about the the event and i remember being on some emails and i can tell you that uh 
I may have said it here, I've said it to multiple people. The person that really got this going and was not going to take no for an answer was Derek Snyder. Um, he was really, really, really passionate about it. And I remember getting some emails, going back and forth. And originally, one of the ideas they had was just to have a regular invitational, a Hall of Fame invitational, and invite five or six teams and call it a championship of some sort, you know, from the previous year. So that was one of their original plans. And I'm glad they they went this way because that would have been a disaster. And people wouldn't have cared. <laughs> and it would have yeah. Been, it, Madison would have got invited and everyone would have been happy because Skinner was on the board. Hey, <laughs> you know, Madison, you know, Madison, Madison's you know. been screwed twice in it, so I can sympathize with everybody. Uh, <laughs> so how many state champs haven't been invited back the next year? Cathedral, Columbus East, how many more? I don't think Imagine. Cathedral is a defending champion. Um, Columbus East, Garrett was a returning, I want to say runner-up. Uh, it was about five years ago. Um, and they didn't get invited back when they, they, they were a top, you know, four team, top four or five team. Um, well, it's, I mean, it's so tough, you know, yeah. um, well, that's just what I'm getting at. Like, let's give the state ch- your reward for winning state is you get an automatic invite the next year. I mean, how many times is the returning state? That's what I'm saying. Like, it's not, but in that that same thing, not, it sounds like. 14 out of 15 times the returning state champ got invited back then, or made the cut or got invited back the next yeah. year. Yeah, but I, I think sometimes, and I'm not saying from the seas, but I'm just being the other side of that, I guess. Like, look at a team like Yorktown, who was incredible when these things very first started. And they're getting better now, but there was a window where they fell off. Like, do you invite them back? Just be, that was the thing. I, I think they they won, they really did they win? Well, Yorktown's won it before, right? Yeah, they won, like, the first. I mean, this is. I think this is number two. 10? I want to say this is number 10, but I think they won like the first five, but, the, but they, I mean, they had a kind of a gradual fall off. They, they were, I think the one year they were second or third maybe. And then, then that, that's when they kind of hit that, that plateau. But I mean, I would be there. I think there was like something in the, in the comments that like, and I, and I, I was, it bothered me. It did bother Joe Butler posted post something that bothered me in there. And I'm not going to like, and I'll use Joe because I like Joe. And I'll see Joe, and I've always liked Joe. But um, he said, well, it's the old boys network. And I think, like, it's less than that than it's ever been. Yes, it is. Like, I don't think – Perry Meridian is not getting in because they've always been good. They got in because they won one of the best county tournaments in the in the state. I would say Marion County is probably the best county tournament in the state. And the, t- the person that they beat was one of the teams that was right up for bid. Yeah. Like, that's not, like, an old guard. Uh, I have like, and I'm not like being a jerk, but I invited anyone. Hey, if you think your team belongs in, and I mean, Coop would never do that, but I'm sure he could probably run a couple duels against teams that are in and be like, yeah, we'd win that. Mm-hmm. Like in your face, Riser. <laughs> and uh, but like the people that were like saying, hey, like this, this, and this, like cool, show me who you should beat and put it on paper because the dudes that are doing that, because Racing did go in there and put like the voters, like they do have to put their name on that. I did put my name on that, and I thought like. I thought the vote was very democratic. I thought that it was very um, – there was a lot of back and forth. We were asking a lot of questions, which is, I think, the, the best part. A lot of those guys are from different parts of the state, so they could say, hey, um, I would, I'd would say I was a big defender of John Glenn. John Glenn beat Chesterton. I think Chesterton's going to be one of the better teams in the area. They're going to be in the same sectional. But, like, to me, a 2A beating a team like Chesterton, who's a traditional power that's been on the individual side of state runner-up, and obviously they don't have the Davisons there, but um, to me that means something. I think that's a lot. And I'm to, so I'm defending those guys against guys they may never wrestle down south there. Uh, and I think there's just a, a very good representation of the state in there. And at the most, like as good as I feel about my individual rankings, I think Dane does a phenomenal job with the team rankings. Yeah, yes he does. Um... But I mean, your point exactly is like if if we're gonna vote two teams in, why not have the if the defending champions are not in the event, if they don't get if they don't get an automatic bid, they should. I mean, I would. There shouldn't be too much that big of a drop off f- no. from a state championship team. Maybe they, they they might not contend for a title. You know, they might not be in the finals this year, but they're gonna still be competitive. They're going to be respectively competitive, unless they decline. I mean, they can always decline too. 
there's a you know there's always that so let's well, be a, a good year for what does crown point have uh seven seniors in their lineup yes they have some pretty good juniors but they have some pretty good seniors it'll be interesting to see where they fall right because mm-hmm. they're gonna lose 26 who's a champ a returning champ i don't want to say he's a, a gonna be a champ a returning champ 32 38 mm-hmm. 45 returning runner up 52 is a sophomore 60 is a cha- returning champ 82 mm-hmm. 70 95 i mean that's gonna be half your team yeah does yeah. the other half the team like generate enough points to automatically get in mm-hmm. yeah so oh, mm-hmm. we got got our comments on here <laughs> i've been reading them from the page yeah i've been i i finally i don't know what was going on with this but so anyway are, are, are we beating this horse down? <laughs> no, I, I, I actually thought people think uh, there's a couple of things that people always ask me, like, oh, do you get so mad when those guys question the rankings? Like, no, I actually like became a fan of a bigger fan of Indiana Matt because of the forum, because of like the debates on there. Now, when people are like, I'm going to beat you up when I see you, like, okay, one, you might never see me. And when you do, you're just going to not say anything. Like, I don't like those posts. But uh, and we've we've had those posts, right? We've had those messages. <laughs> yes. Like when I see you, I'm duking you. Like luckily, I haven't been duked yet. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, like I like that about the the site. That brought joy to my life on Monday. <laughs> you love drama. I, I was like, refresh, refresh, refresh. <laughs> people are like, don't you hate these guys? Like, no, I actually love it. I think uh, there's a lot of people that like. Like guys that are heavy. Po- I, I tell Joe every year we should give a poster of the year award because I think it's great. There's some people that like I like look. I think uh, Chris Riddle's done a great job with his post. I think Tyson's done a great job with his post. Uh, I think people used to give Garcia a hard time, but I love Garcia's posts. <laughs> it makes me smile. Like people are like, oh, don't you hate that hashtag the county? Like, no, actually, I love that. <laughs> I think that's great. <laughs> like I, that's something that I love. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it drives traffic. People come to read that stuff, and yes, I, as much as it, sometimes it's annoying. It is. It's it's good to see that, and it brings people to the board and brings people talking about wrestling. Whether, you know, it's uh, it's the there's it's the uh, the mantra that there's no such thing as bad press. Um, <laughs> so, I like that. Um, I think one of the things that I love is I get the message a lot because. Uh, I'm a different individual than Dustin and Dustin's a different individual than uh, Howie and we're all different than Caleb because Caleb's just a different cat and uh, <laughs> and they're like well Dustin has him ranked second and you have him fifth I was like okay like Dustin might see something different than I see I just see that that's where I have him and like the stupidest thing is sometimes it's in the semi state rankings in East Chicago the same way <laughs> they're like how do you have this kid ranked higher, and I had to make up an excuse like, well, I just think because he has a better shot to get out, and I just messed up. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that. I like that we're all different in our approach to the sport, too. Like, I think it's great. Yeah, so, like, as a ranker, I'll, I'll, you know, I look at your rankings, and, you know, I'll try to find – and it's, it's legit. Like, I'm not going to just pull something out of nowhere, but I try to legit find a couple differences, you know, where – you know, again, like who wants to read the same thing over and over and over? But, you know, we hear different things about weights. Like there's stuff you know that I don't know or who's going this weight, that weight. I've reached out to you about things. So, yeah, it's it's a it's a wild game sometimes. And there's no other team rankings guy. But, man, I don't know if anybody gives Dane more uh, of a hard time than I do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think, I think I, Dane, I like Dane. Dane's my boy. I love going to state finals. I love going to Al Smith and seeing Dane. But man, I bet there's sometimes he's like, I hate this guy. Because I'll just send stuff like out of nowhere. I'll be like, hey, why do you have this? This is stupid, Dan. Why are we doing this? And then I'm just trying to get someone to back it up. Like, you think this guy's going to do good? Nah, I didn't think so either. <laughs> yeah. the uh, It's always interesting to see, you know, when, when one or two people always, I mean, we get the question at least five times a year who, what, you know, Dustin has, you know, so and so over, you know, ranked third. And Mike has him, you know, seventh or eighth, you know, he should be over the, you know, it's like, no, they're number one. They put him out at different times. There's no set schedule. Number two, you guys see things a little bit differently. And, you know, like right now, um, uh, Caleb has Bollinger over Horn. I mean, it's, it's legitimate. I mean, 
Horn yeah. has it qualified for states. Not like it's a travesty, but you have Horn number one in the state. Is, is it a bad thing? I no. just have more respect for the Indiana Map preseason open. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> I think I think uh, I think uh, Caleb's wait holding out for a T-shirt or something. Maybe that'll uh, get him. <laughs> well, and like uh, I, and that's like the coolest thing, man. And that, I think it's really cool about the site. But I love like that post. Uh, there'll be posts like that throughout the year, or that'll make me incredibly happy, and I'll see it. And it has that, like, it says hot on there. And I'm like, okay, I gotta see it. And then sometimes they go a little wonky, man. Like some people put their address on there and say, "Come find me," and I'm thinking, like, <laughs> is anyone driving to Fort Wayne to fight people? And and I like that. Guy. I think that guy's funny. I I I I was actually part of the reason he got unbanned at one point. <laughs> uh, but like sometimes, like we have to remember it's a forum, and we all love. We love the sport. We don't have to get all angry and try to fight people. <laughs> um, but man, I, I thought that was great. Yeah. And know. then when you get when you get triple B going, man, then you know it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Once got, one of the when one of the people on the forum get going, like I used to get on there real hot, like, I, and I only have the one name. I wish I had a burner because sometimes I feel like. Uh, it gets too sensitive, and I have two people that have my back, so I don't want to burn it. Just like <laughs> get people going. I told you, like, I'll, say, I'll find something on social media and send it to Joe. I'm like, I think they're talking about us. <laughs> uh, but sometimes I'll tell my brother to post. He hasn't posted in a while. But um, Mr. I, I like that. Like, when you see Dustin going or you see Joe, Joe starts getting fired up. You know, like, those are the times I'm like, hey, man, you're all Presidente, bro. You need to slow down. Uh, my my keyboard was, you could probably hear me typing yesterday. <laughs> Uh, you know, Caleb, Caleb's trying to come out of wrestling retirement to wrestle grown men. I said, you know, I'm not going to do that. Like, I I have one good go in me. I'm waiting for, you know, a, one of my daughter's boyfriends to get a lippy, and that's going to be my one go. I have to save it. That's all I got. Um, you know, Howie doesn't really get too much on there. I think he did one time. So if you get Howie, man, that's when you know, like, it's you're getting crazy if you can get Howie fired up. Yeah, Howie's a pretty cool cat. He's pretty level-headed. Obviously, he's a police officer, so he has to be pretty level-headed. It takes a lot to get him going, but if he does, you better watch out. <laughs> better better yeah, just not come to Andy. Indy. <laughs> Andy's, Andy Overson, I text Joe to fire him up. Oh, yes. Yes, he did. That's how I, that's how I get Dane going. <laughs> the secret is that in two weeks, he'll invite me to the show. Yeah. He'll invite me to the, the Hershey hat there. Uh, high school wrestling weekly. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. Well, I, I haven't been on yet this year, so I gotta. I think maybe at uh, the team state reveal or the bracket reveal, I'll, I'll uh, be. I'll be. Uh, maybe I'll get on in that one. I don't know if I'll, I, I might make the trip back down there. So, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna go uh, to Al Smith. I told Steve I would uh, be there for day two. I might jump on, do a little interview, a little live interview. I like those guys. I feel like they made Rex's uh his like little character too handsome. That's not how he looks. <laughs> well, he's not looking like that. The the bad thing is they didn't get the earring. That's the the bad thing. They didn't get Rex's I, earring. They didn't get the bling bling. <laughs> if we need to redo and get one real big diamond in there, it'd be nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh so Dustin, have you seen much wrestling this week this year? I know you you've been following your boy around a little bit. Have you saw any of the high school stuff going on? Yeah, I did uh, the Jeff Tools a couple weeks ago. I got to actually ref it, so that was neat uh, to be on the other side of the whistle for once. But, yeah, I've been around more maybe this year than I have in years past so far. So I seen you guys took a dub over Modern Day, huh? Speaking of social yeah, media modern, posts. Modern Day sent their six JV kids down to Oldham County. But, hey, they presented themselves as Modern Day, so we won. Madison over Modern Day. We want the 2026 bid if we can go ahead and try to get it now on the vote in. You're already I'm putting your resume together. <laughs> yeah. Peace State 2026. Uh oh. Um, yeah, I mean, like, we always say, I always say, you guys, like, for semi state wise, yours is pretty tough, man. You guys are pretty spread out. Like, I don't know how much you're making it up to Indy and then to Evansville. That's, you get to rely on some really reliable sports sources, but that's tough. Yeah. I mean, we'll have kids that won't see each other all till semi state. I always find it crazy, like, you know, up there. You guys get semi-state level matches every weekend, and down here, it might, you know, you're lucky to catch one out of the whole area in a week because 
yeah, everybody's just spread so far apart. What I think has been cool um, in, like, the region, and I think it's happened out with you guys too, Joe, is now that, like, and I don't want to say it's all the site, but I will say it's all the site because I love the site. Um, like, with the, the forum and getting going, like, guys have bumped to better matches. Like, the, the, you have guys saying, like, we'll get a lot more matches. Hey, Wednesday, we might be bumping. Hey, Wednesday, we might get this match. And, hey, we're going to send this guy up. And uh, I know Riddle had posted this week about, like, the best ones and twos. I remember that, like, Bam Lawrence and Joe Lee, before they – it was at the Coliseum before they had the video. And I remember they were like, hey, we're bumping Bam. And I'm like, no way. No way they are. And that match was awesome. I thought, like, for the people that were there live that were, like, focused in on that that mat because, obviously, it was a huge event and you had a lot of people around. But uh, I think that's been a really cool thing that – People are jumping all these weights where you can get state, you know, metal matches on a Wednesday. Like, oh, man, we're going to wrestle these guys on a Wednesday. We might bump. I know there was talk about Jackson and Frazier at one point, which I thought would have been a great match. But Frazier is wrestling national level stuff right now. Wrestling Jameis and Garcia every weekend. <laughs> well, Philip Wimpy, Wimpy has, uh, has, says we should start January 2nd with the season. <laughs> That would yeah, be man. interesting. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. People will uh, bumping and stuff. I, I mean, I, we w- I went to uh, New Haven on Thursday, and uh, Easton Doster bumped up to 145 to rest- get a good match. And so that that's, that's always neat to see people bumping weights and, see, you know, chasing some matches. That that always – win or lose, you're, you're chasing those matches, you're going to be better in the long run. And I see some – you know, I don't know if it's kids or teams, whoever has that, that say, if the coach or the the kid has it. But, you know, chasing those matches and taking a couple of L's isn't going to hurt your, you know, if it hurts your ranking, it hurts your ranking. But at the end of the day, if you're, you got to be prepared to wrestle at sectional and regional and semi-state. And if you're not, if you just pin everyone in the first period, you're not going to be prepared. But I think, um, like, like last year with Mendez and uh, Seltzer, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I was just like, hey, we're going to do this. And, like, it's almost like, hey, let's shut this down. These are, like, two legends going at it. Like, pe- like people are going to talk. Like, they're going to make that up. It's going to be like, you know, game seven of the World Series. Like, oh, yeah, I was there. And, no, and obviously, there's only so many tickets sold. But, like, they're going to be like, I was at, you know, Brownsburg when they did that. And it's like, no, you were not. Like, you were in, you know, Gary, Indiana. Stop it. <laughs> but, uh but that's huge, and I don't think that hurts anyone's ranking. I think people ask me, they're like, "Oh, like uh, Iron Man, does that hurt their ranking?" Like, um, nah, we don't have uh, Ben Davino in our state that's you know beating Logan Frazier like that. Now, can Logan Frazier lose? Yeah, like if he loses someone in Indiana, that hurt his ranking. But Ben Davino is really good, and I think like I don't know if I'm breaking like that's not breaking news. He was real close to being in Indiana. <laughs> Yeah. Like Ben DeVino and like uh, a couple other guys when Illinois was like kind of shutting down everything for COVID uh, a couple of years ago, there was a lot of talk about those guys all coming into Indiana, which, you know, there's some really high level wrestlers that, that were right on that brink. And I think they kind of did like a mock state tournament. Yeah. Yeah. They did something in the, in what, June, May or June. I think they did something real late. So, and kind of called it a state tournament, but yeah, it's kind of weak. Um, Al Smith, you want to talk about Al Smith, I guess, or do we want to talk about uh, what go? Actually, let's talk about uh, Western Rochester tonight. Um, I was watching the duel before we came on, and Western or Rochester came out, got out to a pretty big lead, and then Western came back last match, one forty-five. Their kid had their the other guy. It looked like obviously the video. Is a little further away. It looked like he was pretty well stuck. Ended up getting a tech fall to tie it, and sounds like Rochester won on criteria most pins. So crazy match wow. there. It looked like it was a pretty cool environment. They had the spotlight on. Uh, fans were crazy. Sounds like fans might have been crazy after the match. Um, yeah, there's a little scrapping going on. Uh, that's the rumor on the street that uh, some fans got a little crazier after after the match. Um, haven't heard anything. I know, uh, you know, Modern Day is Russell and Tell City tonight. So is Bloomington South and Terre Haute. No, actually, Bloomington South and Terre Haute South is tomorrow. 
Um, that should be that should be interesting because obviously Terre Haute South is at Team State. Bloomington South is not. Where are they? Bloomington South, I believe, is right. Is Bloomington South in? I know they're they've been in the mix there. No, they're not. So, but anyway, so that should, those are the two some big duels. Uh, Prairie Heights East, West East Noble, Avon Easter, Hamilton Southeastern, Modern Day Memorial, Penn Mishawaka tomorrow night. That'll be a good one. That was a good one. Uh, I think they they got to see a little bit. Of, they got a the, little sample platter uh, Saturday at the Henry Wilk. Yeah, they they changed the Henry Wilk individual tournament, right? Yeah, I think uh, Hirschberger, who is retired but not retired, he uh, he said that there was. Too much of uh, we don't want to wrestle him, this team. We we've already wrestled this team. This that, They're like let's just make it an individual tournament and end up looking at some pretty good matches there, um, some good rankable wins and stuff like that. Um, yes, some solid teams from Michigan came down. They said uh, Lucio got DQ'd after the after the match with Denton at thirty eight. I was trying to like follow it. Who got? Who got? Uh, I think he's a Lakeshore kid, right, Lucio? Oh yeah. Yeah, he's pretty tough. He got DQ'd think, after the match. That's good. <laughs> that's what I heard. Yeah. Um, I think that's one I need to make it out to. I, I've always said I'm going to make it out to the uh, the the uh, Penn Mishawaka duel. I know that's like a big one that they put on a big show. Uh, I think Nick Nick's back in the area now. Go hang out with Nick. Maybe Nick's back in Mishawaka. Maybe uh, County North now. Yeah. St. Joe County though. <laughs> Yeah, so that yeah that uh, that should be a good one. Um, Modern Day Memorial, uh, Maryville, Valpo, Jeffersonville, and Floyd Central. That's the rage on the stage. Is that correct? Hey. Yeah. yeah. There's gonna be some raging. I don't know how they can rage in the South if it's not Ho- Hobart's the only one that's allowed to rage, isn't it? <laughs> I got Cook raging in a in a cardigan. Cardigan. I ho- he better wear that to the seating meeting. I'll, I'll give I'll, I'll give him a nine seed if they can. Uh, <laughs> If they can, uh, if he wears a cardigan, actually, no, if him and Johansson wear cardigans, I'll give uh, him a nice Johansson. Johansson's too edgy to be wearing a cardigan. <laughs> he, hey, Jason's bringing some class out, man. I'm telling you, we're selling solidarity today. I wasn't got this. I wasn't going to wear it. I told Joe he switched into a Christmas hoodie. Yep, I got my Christmas uh, ugly sweater, uh, Christmas ugly wrestling sweater uh, shirt. So, um, other events this week before we go backwards, uh, the Joe Bourbon holiday duels, Cascade, Hamilton Heights, Rensselaer. The, that looks pretty good. Uh, yeah. Um, I think was it Cascade and Hamilton Heights first round tomorrow. So. <laughs> Cook will be at the seating meeting. What? Versus Quinn. <laughs> what? Yeah. What do you say? The, the Iron Bear versus Quinn? Yeah. That's going to be... Yeah, we got to get Quinn a tougher nickname than that. Yeah, Quinn, Quinn needs... Iron Bear Qu- a good one. Qu- Quinn needs, like, the the Iron Ginger. Uh... <laughs> the, red, the Red Baron. The Red Baron. Yeah, there we go. The Red Baron. That sounds that sounds First intimidating. Iron Bear. Sounds like a, like, a, like a 1950s pro wrestling match. Yes. <laughs> so, um... ECIC is Friday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Friday, Friday. ECIC, um, you have what? What a snow apocalypse have you guys getting snow apocalypse down south? Or is that just up here in the north? No, I think they're we're getting missed. At least our little corner is so. Every everyone's talking about this snow apocalypse. I seen the grocery store today was getting crazy. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not uh, worried about it. I think it's a little overrated. <laughs> it says like four to six start. inches or something around here. I, I'm like, okay, that's good. That's fine. So, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so. Um, well, what projections do you look at? <laughs> I don't. What's I just, the website that you use? The, what, what do they say? Like the, the European map or the. I look outside. Two, it's not snowing. <laughs> what, are like the, what are the two projected models? <laughs> I don't. I, I. I'm not into the weather. I see what's no. going. You know, I look outside. I ask. I ask my my Google Home and what the weather's like, and 
That's where I believe. You don't got an Alexa? No, I'm a Google person. So okay. Um, last week you were at the uh, the Carnahan. You stopped in at the Carnahan, yeah. Kissed some babies, uh, shook some hands. Yeah, I think I was supposed to go do some stuff with Region Sports, and I end up just be hanging out, and talking to a lot of people. <laughs> so I'm pretty lucky I don't get a paycheck from those guys, or they wouldn't pay me. Um, <laughs> A lot of good wrestling, man. Uh, same thing we said about Iron Man. You're seeing, like, I I, I was kind of texting you during there. Um, Jake Hackaday lost in the in the semis, or maybe it was in the quarters. I think it was was it the quarters? I think he lost a maybe semis. He wrestled a kid that was like a like he was a five seed, and he was like a <clears throat> like a Reno runner up. I was like, how'd this kid get such a bad seed? <laughs> like, he was really tough. Uh, you know, I've seen uh, Frazier lose there. He lost to Garcia, but we, we, James to Garcia. But we we kind of said that like it's uh it's tough to beat a tough guy like three times in a row, right? It's incredibly tough. Ah, uh, I think uh, Crown Point ended up losing to St. Ed's by three. Uh, Cody Goodwin got DQ'd in a match in the in the semis. He ended up taking fourth. I mean, not to say he would have got third, but I think that ended up being like close to the difference. Well, the Clark was. brothers are getting really, really good. I think they both got pins to kind of put them in contention. Um, okay. Brownsburg looked really good. Dickman looked really good again. I think he was runner up. Uh, Gunner Henry was champ. Was he? Was he their only champ? Was Gunner? I believe so. But um, yeah. Crown Point, uh, Goodwin, they lost all of his points, plus minus three. So oh yeah, he would have. So, they would have yeah, won if they had him, if he just would have got fourth. So yeah, it was yeah. a chippy match. But you said that kid wrestled Sammy Chippy at uh, Iron Man, right? Yeah, they got that. That match got real chippy. At, I think that was a. I think that was a fifth place match. Um, and it got yeah, it got really chippy there. So I'm not. You try to break Cody Goodwin's leg. Uh, like how remember when Bo Jackson broke his bat over his knee? Yeah. I think that that kid was trying to do a Cody Goodwin's knee, <laughs> and Cody's Cody wrestled a little chippy already. You know, yeah. I've seen some we've seen some Cody matches. We thought we were gonna go a little bit to the left. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that that was a uh, that's not a uh, yeah. Hopefully he'll be back for Al Smith. So that's what I'm hearing. Um. So I guess that'll work itself out. Um, I think they're getting Gavin Gendron's back for Smith also. That's what that's what he was saying last week, um, or yeah, at, at uh, Iron Man. So that, I think that's kind of the plan. As long as there's no uh, hiccups with the uh, the injury, it's not like a uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a it's a big enough injury that he has to be out, but but not a like something needs See, rehab. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. want to say what it is. I don't, I don't think you know. I don't. It's not a big. De- I mean, you'll fi- people will figure it out once they see him. But it's one of those things that it's not something that it's just a matter of make sure everything heals correctly. And if it does, I think he'll be back. So, were you, Dustin, were you a big uh, guy when someone had something wrapped up? You give him Indian burns and stuff, try to break his arm. <laughs> yeah, no, I never done nothing like that. <laughs> Same. Yeah. But they always tell us, man, don't tape nothing up because these guys might try to hurt you. So, no, you, you take both. Yeah, you know I mean, if if you have like a you know uh, something on your you know your hand taped, you take both hands. So then then they don't know which one's your bad one. Or you tape your bad one. You tape your bad one, and then they go after that one. They don't realize or your good. Sorry, you tape your good one. So they go after your you know. So they go after that one, not realize that the other one's the bad one. And the officiating where I see a lot of that happening. <laughs> I'm still young in the game, I guess. I haven't seen a lot of that yet either. No, uh-uh. Yeah, DQ anyone yet? No, I actually, I called, let's see, the first, I did my son's first junior high match of the year, and I called his best friend for an illegal slam, which didn't go over well. And uh, that's about, I haven't had no misconducts yet or anything. Coaches have been excellent. Like, I'll give coaches credit. Like, all the coaches I've had to deal with so far have been excellent. So, Joe, you wore the stripes, and all the coaches have been pretty nice to you. Yeah, yeah, they're all cool now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> yeah, I, I retired my stripes, but uh, yeah, they're usually pretty good. Um, middle school coaches uh, are the fiery ones. 
<laughs> dads, dads at wrestling meets. Yes, yeah. dads are always dads are always good. That the the uh, they get uh, they get a little fired up, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, so. Yeah, I think um, it looked like. I mean, the officiating was good there. I'm sure it's different though, because I, I, we we talk about the the officials in the north to the officials in the south, and I thought the officials in uh, Ohio were letting the, even be a little bit more physical than they even do in the north up up in our ways. Uh, I don't know, man. I thought I didn't know I didn't think Cody was getting up from that slam. Honestly, yeah, I thought that was, that was pretty tough. Was, <laughs> yeah, he went like neck, shoulders, back, feet. I, I was like shy. I think he like kind of like waited like. Ran it down to like almost the end, and then uh, for it to get like chippy like that, probably one of those you know you know really tough uh, tough matches. But he got slammed pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that was I was surprised he got up. I kind of pulled that up. I'm like, ooh. So yeah, that was that was pretty pretty surprising he got up there. Um, but yeah, um, I was at I, I went to uh, Carol this weekend. Um, Jay County and Garrett wrestled. That was a pretty solid. Jay County's pretty tough, top to bottom. And it was a it was an interesting duel. There's some places where there's some toss up matches, and Jay County ended up winning some of those in the upper weights, which is pretty good. And once you get down to the lower weights, it's Jay County's pretty tough. Basically from six or thirteen, wherever they put more, through about forty five, fifty two, and yeah. I mean, you're you're gonna you have to pick those guys off a couple times, um, with your better guys and not get, give up pins, or you're gonna be in a big hole after those first seven weight classes. Yeah, a huge win for Cody Rollis there, right? Yeah, R- Rollis over Brady. Um, took him down, uh, got a turn in the first, and then kind of just wrestled a smart match from there. And Brady got a little sloppy, and he, I think Rollis ended up beating him. It, the match was a lot closer than the score indicated, so um, it'll be interesting to see if they ma- if they see each other at Team State. I'm not sure what the seeds are going to look like, if Garrett will drop or what what that'll happen. But it could be interesting if uh, you know see what happens. There's some close matches in there that I think that you know that it would take a lot for that. You know, you I mean you can usually if there's four or five you know close matches, you hope that you could flip two or three. There's no, I mean, saying you're gonna flip five is gonna be is pretty crazy, so, <laughs> and that's yeah, that's one of those things that you gotta flip those matches and then you gotta keep the other ones the same. But it, it'll be interesting to see how things shake out, and you know, especially after Al Smith and the other tournaments going on this weekend, this this next this next week. When uh, when is the show for the uh, the seeds? When when's that going on? Uh, January second, six till eight p.m. Um, at the at the double eagle. Yes, at the double eagle, and so that's when the brackets will be revealed. So uh, I'm working on getting the information from Mr. Ratliff about the uh, at Team State, like all the start times, entry, you know, and all that stuff. I'm gonna put up on a page like I did last year and try to get, you know, make sure all that information's out so we get all the brackets and everything. So should be some good, you know. They're gonna wait till after. Uh, all the big holiday tournaments next week, so they'll have a little bit better feel of what's going on and you know how to seed it better. So, Greg, uh, Greg stepped away from coaching this year too. I asked him, he said, you know, he's enjoying a lot of time, and <laughs> so he's not coaching at Edgewood this year. So he gets to be on the other side of it, man. Yeah. So, any, uh, where are you? Uh, you going anywhere this? Uh, these next few weeks, Dustin, you gotta um, head to Mooresville or <laughs> I'm actually running running the Cub Classic. We're doing a thing in Madison. It used to be a two day kind of ten team duel and this year we're transitioning to an individual tournament and I'm running that. So nice. um, I don't know if we'll see a lot of great individual we'll have to see I'll have to see East uh, East Central, Heritage Hills, that could be some good ones there. Uh Madison. Um I mean so I think that, that Cub Classic always has some real tough matches. Yeah. So you go through and, and, it, and not just like tough matches, but like some guys that maybe are unknown, knocking off some ranked guys. That's always one that like, like someone like, you know, like look at this and like, oh, wow. Like someone yeah. that's, you know, kind of flying under the radar. Are you guys doing the Star Wars setup for the mats? 
We only need four mats this year, so no, we won't have the. <sighs> I don't think we'll have the Star Wars set up this year, but go go five mats and. You can run it and ref at the same time, and and be on the mic. Are you gonna be on the mic? I, at least? I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be micing all week. I'll be micing the whole day. Okay. Whew. DJ on the mic. DJ mic tournament admin. What don't you do? Do a little bit of everything. <laughs> you should just you know bring the whistle just in case you know a soldier goes down. You got to step in and. Right. <laughs> They asked me to ref my son's tournament this past uh, Saturday, and I said, no, I want to be a dad for once. So I, but then after watching the rest, I probably should have ref. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's against the rules, man. That'll get you some hate mail. You can't <laughs> criticize officials. <laughs> I've lost more friends criticizing officials than anything. I was in Kentucky, though. It wasn't Indiana officials. Oh, it was God. Kentucky officials. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I think Joe gets – Joe gets more messages about me criticizing officials. I think I don't even know if I criticize officials that much anymore than rankings and the comments. Yeah, I, I I don't know either. So, yeah, so um, Al Smith's coming up next week, um, and word is that it will be seated correctly, and yeah, have already. Uh, I, I I'm I'm wanting to hint that you know just to preview some of the seeds, but I don't think that'd be good. I've been going through it and have some. Uh, it, it's gonna be inter- It's gonna be fun. I can tell you that much. There's some some ugly weight classes out there that are just brutally tough. Um, I mean, and I know we kind of said it last week. Like Steve's done a great job of restocking the tournament and getting a lot of really good teams in there. I don't know if it's just Steve, but Steve, let's say Steve and staff. Yeah, but. Uh, He's done a really good job of just making that thing like a grinder. And it's like almost one of those things like, okay, cool. Like you didn't bring a full team. Sorry, you got to go. We're going to bring in, we're going to replace a team that brought maybe three kids with a team that's going to be a top, you know, 20 team. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be good to see someone like Western who at times you haven't seen them wrestle, you know, out of their area. They're gonna be there. That's gonna be good for them. It's gonna be good for their rank, you know, for their good kids like Betts and Tishner. Um, and it's gonna be, you know, the other team, um, Warren Central's back. Yeah. They're in it oof, about six or seven years ago for a couple years, and then when Team State and they dropped it when Tante was there, when Team State and Al Smith were like the same week, which is the most brutal week possible. <laughs> he had like two days off, and then oh, it's Team State time, and you're trying to just recover mentally and physically from the grind of the Al Smith. And then, so, um, that should be, th- those two teams are, about that. Yeah. Cause remember, I think, I think, uh, Brown's that year also did that DCC duels too. And like, in like a two week period, it was like DCC. Um, they weren't at Al Smith, but I think they did like Brexville and they did a team state or something. It was something stupid like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just remember, I mean, it was like Tuesday, Wednesday was Al Smith. And then Saturday was, was team state in 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 a, in a week span, our kids triple you know doubled their losses you know yeah if not triple some of them might have tripled their lo- number of losses, and these weren't bad Man. wrestlers you know and it's it was a brutal week and it was just like you know, I was thinking about that like with Brownsburg and uh, Crown Point the last two weekends some of these guys might have doubled their like career losses like Jake Hockaday has doubled his career losses in two weeks, he, well he's had. He got fourth, didn't he? So he's he has four losses now. He had zero last year, didn't he? Or no, he had, yeah, one. They had one. He had one to uh, at the Carnahan. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that that's he has four Two losses weeks. already this year. <laughs> Derek touched on it in that in that video. Like you got to like remind these kids that they're really good. They're just wrestling really good stuff. You got to build them back up, and and that's tough, man. Like. uh I mean, how many losses is Sam going to have? I mean, he won this weekend, but what did he take? Did he take two losses uh, at Iron Man or three? Two, yeah. Cody Goodwin, you know, probably like these guys are single-digit loss guys for their career, jumping in some unreal tournaments and maybe, you know, doubling double up what they've had like their career. We, we talked about Reinhardt last week, but man, like, did I heard a Division One team reached out to him uh, this week? That, that's a rumor. I, I haven't talked to Bill about that, but like uh, they said, like after Iron Man, like uh, a Big Ten team had reached out. Uh, that's that makes it worth it, right? Like, that's not surprising. 
<laughs> yeah, that's... go there and wrestle in front of some of the best you know coaches in the country, and you know then get scholarship money. Yeah, there were, how there were a ton of college coaches there. I mean, I I know I saw Erslin there. I you know I, there were just um, Oklahoma State was there. Uh, IU. I, there were some. Vegas was in the house at Crown Point Saturday. Yeah, nice. He's not technically a coach anymore. He's like administrative assistant or something of that nature, club director. I don't know if well, he had a lot of Purdue stuff on his hand, a lot of Purdue guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He, I don't know exactly. He has a new designation. Um, and it's just a, I don't know. It, it's one of those things that they can't have so many, they can only have so many coaches, but he's still doing a lot of the same things he was doing. It's just a matter of a, uh, it's one of those fun things. Yeah. Player development, <laughs> something like that. There, there's something that they, it's all, I see you know. Convoluted. Ace Ross team just got to keep applying for a new job that puts your license at the bottom of the pile. Yeah. I've seen that. <laughs> nice. So, um, anything – so when is the uh, Cub Classic? Is that next week? Yeah, 29th. The 29th. One-day tournament? Eight. Yep. Nice. How many teams you guys got there? What's that? Is it 10 teams? No, I think it's – it's seven. We're looking. Maybe it might be eight by the time we get there. We're letting. Um, it's just going to be a ten man bracket. We're doing two team of reserves, non scores. So that's good. You get those guys some matches. It's always. Are you doing like a pool or is it regular bracket? We'll see. Based off entrance, it could be. You know, I'll see what track kind of leads me in the direction of. So <laughs> nice. So. Um... Do you want to preview any of the oh, man. Smith or? I, I, I opened up this uh, the spreadsheet early on, whenever it wasn't full. But holy smokes, yeah, it's gonna be good. Yeah, it's gonna be I'm, a pretty good tournament. Yeah. Uh, just how how many are gonna be seated? Are they gonna, gonna do top eight? Twelve, from what I have gathered. We're going to seed twelve, and it's gonna be fun. <laughs> be a Absolutely. Yes. Oh, yes, it will be. I'm excited for it. You gonna play the bingo? <laughs> yes, we are. I, 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 that, that's a pretty good game to play. It's. Uh, I don't know if it should be bingo or a drinking game, but. Uh, <laughs> I hear both happen in the LC meeting. So. <laughs> so it's ha- it's been known to happen. Yeah. There's. I mean, 170 might be the highlight weight there. Um, that's gonna be fun. I mean, Roman, Goodwin, Costello was a qualifier, Noah Clauser um, was third there last year, Kyle Harden, Isaac Valdez, Anthony Cashman, Gavin Malone, Duke Myers, Zem- Zemaray, and Holyfield. Um, a lot of really good wrestlers. It's going to be uh, very interesting to see how this, uh, how, how, it, uh, how everything plays out, especially at a weight class that, that's deep, that is that deep with, uh, let's see. Man. Three, I said 32. I, I know I told uh, Steve, like 32, like this could be some of the top placers in the state. Kyra Lavelle, Zara Walker, David Maldonado, Hayden DeMarco, Wesley Harper, Josh Johnson, who has a medal, Mikey Kilmani, Captain Nowowski, uh Brock uh, Hedgewood, Ty Lesnar. Ty, and like we're not even including people. There's always someone that's going to come out of nowhere and shake up this bracket. Yeah, I think There's Belmont's gonna be that kids, out there. I think Belmont's kids decent, from what I've gathered. Um, you got yeah, that's a pretty deep weight class too. Tive Del- Delgado, who was a uh, semi-state kid. Um, yeah, so that that's gonna be a, a pretty deep weight class. And I mean, you're already looking at you know Hayden DeMarco probably will be sitting at a Hayden DeMarco and Wesley Harper were both runner-ups last year at the tournament and will probably be sitting at a four and five seed. <laughs> yeah tough yeah it's pretty then, good then you have Josh Johnson who was third there last year is probably sitting at about a six seed <laughs> and he has a medal from two years ago yeah not, not too shabby yeah it, it's just how how deep the, the field is and uh like the coolest thing is there's gonna be someone that jumps out of here that's that we have maybe we have on a watch list or you know people have emailed us about that might just come out and kill and you'll walk away and be like, wow, like that dude was, you know, I didn't even know that guy was going to be in the mix. 
and he's you know in the semis. Yeah. I mean, I think I think like last year. I mean, obviously you've been in that CD meeting. I'm not in the CD meeting, but like, you know, you're fighting for guys like they were fighting against a guy like Weems. Like, well, he's really good, or Cody, right? Like Cody Goodwin was a guy that, like, how do we see? Them? Like, cool, draw him out of a hat. And I think Vince was like, yeah, pull him out of a hat then. Like he could draw the one and. And it's like, well, okay, let's not do that. He's really good. Let's not do that. Yeah. It was funny how uh, how they're like, oh, yeah, I'd do that. Or or they want to say, oh, well, we'll just drop him to like a you know a lower seed. But then all of a sudden when your number one seed is going to see him in the quarterfinals, you're like, maybe he should be a little bit higher. You know, maybe he should be a three or four instead of a seven or eight, you know. Um so I know, I mean, that those two were big ones that I pleaded. I was like, dude, we need, they need to be seated. And we, uh, good one ended up being seated somewhere. I want to say. I think four. he was at the end of a four, right? Yeah, I think he was like a four, which probably was about where he, you probably should put him. Weems was not seated and yeah. ran through that bottom bracket like it was his job. And it was like. Yeah, it was pinning. Yeah, I'm like. Dude, you, you either are going to draw him like that or you're going to, you know. So I think seed in 12 will be, it, it'll help with some of the arguments. Okay, you know, especially from those, you know, higher seeds of six, seven, and eight where there is a lot of arguing. And well, um, it, it say, well, you know what? If I don't get the six or seven, I can get the nine or 10. I'm in the same spot. So I'm not going to, you know, argue too much. Yeah. Well, I think the other cool thing we talked about it, we had on it early on in the show was um, a lot of these programs have wrestled really good teams already. They're going to have, you know, losses and notable, notable wins and uh, common, common opponents. Like you're not going to have, you know, oh, this guy's 30, you know, he hasn't seen anybody going into the Al Smith. Like a lot of these guys are going to have state credentials or have, you know, wrestle tough matches already. I think a tough one, and just kind of look at the list, is a kid like Dominic Brown, who who just got on the mat, who's incredibly tough. He's a freshman. He doesn't have state experience. But um, kind of had some, some uh, you know, weird stuff going on early on. Uh, is back, and I know he's incredibly tough. Like, where do you drop a guy like that in at? Because yeah. that would be a guy that they will argue against, right? Like, well, he's a 3-0 freshman, and, like, they don't really take into account. Like, the IHSWCA has done a great job with the middle school state stuff. And we talked about that last show or like you can go back and look at that stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah, all these guys are medalists. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, And then it'd just be like one random guy that's not a medalist. It'd be like, I wonder what happened to him. <laughs> yeah, 120 has a, about four or five pretty solid freshmen that it, that one's going to be fun to argue. Um, Fielden, Sessa, uh, Elijah Brody, Dominic Brown are all pretty darn good oh, i've had some you know some solid in season success right now but a lot of you know youth stuff uh is gavin bragg a freshman or is he the saw he might he's soft he was sophomore. i think he's a freshman sophomore champ okay a runner up yeah he had a really oh, yeah. good he, freshman oh, he, he was i should just have looked on my spreadsheet but yeah he was uh he was fourth there last year so um remember when uh that guy wanted to fight nick there yeah. Yes. Yes. That was a uh, a parent that I'm not gonna went... go into the names of a parent wants to fight Nick Cross there, and I was thinking, man, that might not be the coach you want to fight. That guy's still an active fighter. <laughs> there are two coaches I can say that I will not want to fight. One is Nick, and oh. the other is probably the Iron Bear. <laughs> yeah. But both have, have, guys been, have not... had professional MMA fights. If, if if there's you know, I'm sure there might be a few others. Those are ones I will not fight. <laughs> I got the. Just to kind of randomly jump in, I got a Tell City Modern Day score. Uh, oh, yeah, let's hear that. Modern Day 36, Tell City 22, and Tell City forfeited uh, the last two weights. So 12 points were all forfeits. So, mm-hmm. What were the last two? I'm saying they forfeit. Tell City forfeited uh, 220 in heavyweight. Ah, uh, man. That, that looked like a cool event. They're ha- Where were they having that at? Like an old venue, too, right? I don't, I don't know. I'm just getting texts. It said the big matches for uh, Tell City was 113 and 170. And then Coy Hammock picked up a pin form at 32. So that sounds like those were kind of three of the bigger matches. I'd have 38 to look at like Van Over and uh, the drink kids or not. But. Like Van Over and Kelby Glenn, probably a good one, right? 
Maybe. Yeah, Vanover must have won. That wasn't in the notes I got. Huh. Uh, where? Who posted that? I think it was the Hammocks shared that. The uh, the picture of the venue. Yeah. Yeah. It was at uh, the Brian Taylor Sports Arena. That's not their high school, right? That thing looks like an old. Like boxing gym. That looks like where Mickey wow. used to shoot hockey. Oh, the Brian Taylor. That looks pretty. The Brian Taylor Sports. That's interesting. I'm telling you, man. That's where, you know, Rocky had that locker and then Mickey threw his stuff <laughs> Is that the. What is that place? I want to uh -huh. see. The... It looks cool. It actually looks like the uh, Hammond Civic Center. Gulf <laughs> City, Indiana. Is it is that in Tell City or is that the The Gym's yeah. in Tell City? Okay. That's pretty oh there, I see a picture of it. That's kind of an old school gym. That looks pretty cool. I bet that I bet that got pretty loud. How far is yeah, Tell City not, from uh, modern day? Not very far at all. Nick said, he asked me if I want to go outside. I said, I just said, I fight all the time. That's not his favorite, right? <laughs> they said that is their high school gym. That looks really cool. Oh, it is their high school gym. Yeah. All right. So I'm excited. They're named after Brian Taylor, three-time NAIA champ for Finley. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> what? <laughs> Different Brian Taylor. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that's, yeah, Sarah, that's a... That was one of my matches to watch, and obviously I hit the nail on the head with that. So, yeah. Tell City's done a great job building that up. Yeah. yeah. I want to. I mean, you know, like uh, like the younger, they have a lot of coming up behind these guys here. Triple B. Is there a lot of? I'm not. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't know for sure, but I know they always do have, you know, younger guys there. I mean, the Stevens kid. That's whose mom texts me a lot. He's a younger kid who's doing really well. That is probably under the radar. So. I know uh, there's a there's a little hammock in middle school, right? Yeah, yeah. Do they not have a 220 in heavyweight? That's what I was told. Oh, I don't know because I'm trying to – I didn't ref them. See, they were at that term I was at, but I never got to ref Tell City at all. Okay. It looks that like could be tough. We're seeing over Chase Stevens 7-5, to five, so it was a close match. Wow. Let's see. I'm kind of looking at some of the results that they have posted. And it looks like they have forfeited 220 and heavyweight most events. So we have to go bang the halls, get in team state. Yeah, can't be getting 12. Yeah, they'll man. be at they'll be at team state. They, I mean, they are defending champs, correct? They're defending the two A champs or one A. Yeah. So they'll be interesting to see how they match up with uh, with Rochester, but spotting. I can see spot Rochester. in Rochester six at two twenty. Uh, yeah. Heavyweight is a spot where you could probably win if you have a. I mean that that's one there, non super studs, so that's a match you'd probably want to get. But that's a. Uh, I mean spotting them twelve points isn't a smart maneuver. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, I mean obviously there's one wire to wire uh, Western and one on criteria. Yeah, yeah. So that should be interesting to see how that. Uh, I mean. It'll be interesting to see how they get seated with two forfeits, because um, that's at the two A level you can make it up or one A you can make it up a little bit, but that's still a lot to make up in a, in a big duel. So. Oh yeah, because even where Tell City is really good, I mean, so is Rochester. Yeah. Thirty two, they're good there. Thirty eight, they're solid. Yeah. There's a lot of you know a lot of good individuals. But the South will rise so again, I'm right, Dustin? Right. Well, no, we don't say it like that, but no, yeah. <laughs> we don't we reload or whatever. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, what else do we have to talk about? Al Smith seating. Um, yeah, one, 120 is going to be fun. Uh, I mean, you got Jackson, Goss, Tishner, Dylan Bennett, Liam Kruger, Gavin Bragg, Owen Bunton. And then you got, you know, Field and Sessa, Brody, and Dom Brown. Um, I Sessa's not undefeated, obviously. Brody, no, he might... lost. Yeah. He lost to Jackson. Yeah, and that was. 
I think uh, Don Brown hasn't wrestled a lot of matches, but he's undefeated. Yeah, he has right now. What they put in, he's two and zero. Um, Brody, I don't have his record in there. I don't. I don't know if he's undefeated. I know he's had some pretty solid wins. So yeah, he's he's pretty solid. Um, I mean, you get, it's gonna be tough, man. It's gonna be a tough overall day, and. Jackson and Tishner has some some battles too, right? Yeah, yeah. It looks like right now Jackson obviously number one. That's a pretty easy one. Goss would probably be number two. Tishner three. Bennett four. So I don't know. That those two might switch. I don't know that. That's a kind of an iffy one. Liam Kruger and Gavin Bragg. You know, five, six, seven. So it should be interesting. Liam Kruger. Uh... Who did he just wrestle? Is it Billerman? They want to, yeah. they want to put up yeah. 30 points? Yeah. yeah. There, there's a casual out there hanging 30s. That, that's <laughs> Go, pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> That'd been fun. We need to have that one. You know, get get a Cooper to put that one online. <laughs> or shot. Yeah. <me. laughs> That'd be a good one to watch. I mean, Kruger can put some points up on the board. He's, uh, he's pretty good on top, so that's not surprising. And then, you know, you have a Perry Meridian wrestler – Perry isn't afraid to um, to headlock anyone, so I'm sure there were some lots of fireworks in that match. So 38 would be good too. Uh, they said Bryce Denton's huge at 38. Nice. Steve said he thought he was big at 40. He said Bryce Denton bigger than he was at 140. I said pretty big. Yeah, yeah, that should be. You got Luke, Reese Courtney, Lucas Clement, Bryce Denton. Uh, Evan Cruz, Brock Hagwood. So those Devin Wibble sitting in there. Uh, Hobart, he was a state qualifier a couple years ago. Mikey Robles, who was a, qual- a placer in Michigan. They're kind of hanging out down, you know. Those are going to be fun to fun to hear the arguments for those. But it uh, sounds like Cook's not going to argue for any of his kids, so he's just going to take whatever seed we give him. So. <laughs> what, a, what a gentleman. Yes. <laughs> what? Cook's- what day is the uh, the CD meeting gonna be on? Wednesday night, I believe. Do they do they bring you guys a pretty good spread or what? They get you guys some food. There's some Jets pizza, which is some people think it's really good. I'm like, eh, it's not nothing. I'm gonna go out of my way to eat. <laughs> what what's the pizza down in Mad City? Oh man, there's a place called Pizza Uncommon. It's pretty good down here. Check it out. You guys need to come down. We need to do a show in Madison. <laughs> I, when I go down 65, we we take it all the way down. I always see the exit. I'm like, I should just get, I should get off right here. Just stop in. <laughs> stop the surprise. Here's knock on the door. <laughs> here's where Triple B lives, and I just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Joe had me believing you guys had all kinds of covered bridges. I was about to go check them out. Take a weekend. <laughs> yeah. How many times did you guys capture the bridge? I had uh, I had to go and look up where the bridges of Madison County was actually from. It was in Iowa. <laughs> I said, Dustin's out here hanging out with Clint Eastwood for weeks, and he didn't let us know. <laughs> have you guys? Do you guys have possessions of the bridge when you guys had the Battle of the Bridge? Do you, does Indiana still have possession of the bridge? No, it's uh, it's the Milton Madison Bridge. Kentucky got it. Yeah. Oh, Kentucky got it now? Yeah, it's Jeez. the Milton Madison Bridge, technically. Uh, so, who do you, does uh, Floyd, like, Floyd, Floyd Central has to share a bridge with like Kentucky, too, right? They battle for that bridge? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> right there, my little little man. Uh, we don't have no good battle. We got, like, any better battles in the region. <laughs> There's only turf wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No battles, just turf wars. We're gonna have to get a good name for There's no, the there's no uh, battles because all the kids just go to Crown Point, so you can't have like battles. It's just <laughs> that's how they get them. <laughs> <laughs> you wrestle them for a spot on their team. <laughs> battle of Broadway. They don't, they don't have a battle on the uh, brick road. <laughs> Who's on the Battle of Broadway? Oh, that's but that's Andrean and I think Maryville for football, right? Klein Avenue. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> we just have like a Ridge Road battle, like Hobart, Kaimet, Munster, Griffith, Highland, all those like all those guys are right on Ridge Road. Ridge Road duels. That'd be a good one. Ridge Road duels. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, one eighty two will be pretty interesting. Uh, Cruz, VZ, Weems, Caden Lone, Luke Panola. That's going to yeah, be... Yeah, a lot of, couple medals in there. Yeah, yeah. Four guys, five guys that placed at uh, Al Smith before. And they're all going to want to... They all, they're all going to want the number one seed. So... Um, How about 145? Ball, Torres, Krasia, Dylan Graham. All those guys got medals. Yeah. Torres, Ball, Graham all have semifinal medals. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Harvest already does do that. And then they rerun that back at the county. <laughs> the Harvest is like the county minus Perry Meridian Penn. Yes. And yeah, Maryville. Yeah. Um, I get, that's why I can get like every single regional qualifier from the, the Hobart Regional. <laughs> we've seen that match nine times. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, 220 will be fun. Will Clark. Uh, Tommy Morrill, Devin Kendricks, Jackson Weingart, Nate Johnson, Keegan Martin. Um, you got five guys that have been to state and two have medals, five placers. So that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty interesting to see. That that'll be a, a fun seating. But I think I already have it all ironed out. Heavyweight. Heavyweight's gonna be fun too. Yeah. Uh, Paul Clark, Ho Jose Smith, Peyton Kendall, Brandon Jellison. Uh, Anthony Poppy should be, you know, those are all the, those are the top five, five seeds there. Um, Sleeper pick Tyler shot center Grove. Yeah. And yeah. And you got someone like Tyler shot who's a, a, uh, not in the lineup and you know, he's going to have a few losses, I think at least a couple. And you know, we're, where are we going to throw him in? What freshman, sophomore state champ. Man, so. how, how, and then they, they they lost RD three too, but man, that was a deep deep end with some big guys. I think Maurice is in there rolling around with those dudes. I don't know, maybe. Who's, who's the big guy coach? Who do they got as a big guy coach over there? They have someone, right? Uh, I I assume they do because they have some pretty good big guys. And you're getting guys like RD three and Nate. I, I don't know. I wouldn't want to be a throw dummy for uh, Nate Johnson. I can tell you that much. Nah, I'm not trying. <laughs> But that mullet, though, I've seen it on video. That thing's, that thing's pretty glorious. Yeah. You used to rock that mullet like that back in the day or what? I didn't. Dustin probably did. No. My brother had a pretty nice mullet. I never had it. We didn't know about mullets back then. Isn't, isn't that the official them. haircut of Madison? What? Well, uh, no, I don't think so. Maybe. Who knows? Would you, would, you let, let me, would you let Little B grow one? Absolutely not. His, some film of his friends have done it and they pulled it off, but no, nah, we yeah. not <laughs> I pick OCF from school, there's a lot of mullets in that little parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, um, any other things to talk about? Any other rants you want to go on, Dustin? I don't think so. I think I'm good. I think I got it all out. I mean, it's a shame. Again, he should be in, but whatever. <laughs> Are you gonna protest? Said, are, are you still not? Are you gonna protest by not paying your uh, coach association dues? <laughs> man, let me tell you. Any teams that have points, we have openings at Madison on January seventh, and we'll just throw the state duels name on it. So if you feel like you got robbed, come down. We'll do the triple B state uh, duel championships. It's we might give out uh, you know the polar rings or whatever for the winner. The, you're gonna get rings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And they give these to the girls for winning softball tournaments. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My son gets some of those for baseball too. Yeah. Yeah. They um, they're big, man. They ain't no joke. <laughs> <laughs> they uh. <clears throat> so we were talking a little bit in the group text. So New Haven's in Team State, and they're hosting a tournament that day. Yes, they're hosting the Bill Kerbal, which has, I don't know, according to the. Admins there, it's the world's longest uh, running invitational in history of the world or something, or Indiana, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they're hosting it. Yeah, so um, I assume they're not they're not participating. They're just going to host it, and I, don't, I do not believe they're going to even send, like, their backups, so, but they're keeping I mean, it. They, 
you almost have to take some like strong backups with you just in case, right? Yeah. Yes, you sh- you should. Um, so I don't know what they're. I mean, they have a pretty good big big team. Uh, I was there obviously last Thursday, so they have a pretty good you know pretty bet big team. So you know maybe maybe they throw in ten of those guys. I don't know. So um, yeah, it's a pretty solid tournament. Um, has some you know panel send their second team there. Um, they'll have some. They'll usually have some pretty good teams. Let me see what it says. And that team's there, right? Pat who? Pat. Penn's at teams. Yeah. They're, they're they might not. Team. Yeah, they might not be there this year. I don't know. Um, I know they've done that. Uh, Bluffton and eh, Bluffton won't be there. I don't think. Uh, so we're doing. That was the real. That was a real trip. We were trying to get all the teams from the Bell Kerbal. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to kill the Bell Kerbal uh, invite here. Um, no, I didn't even know that they're hosting the tournament. That's that's crazy. Yeah, and they uh, didn't. They have enough people to 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 do both yeah. like so you have carol decalb east side dwanger wayne heritage homestead leo new haven northfield twin lakes van Wert, ohio and woodland so um i don't know if that's 16 teams or not but i know bluffton had been there norwell i think is usually in there so um quite a, a few teams that are at team state and obviously new haven so um, it's usually pretty pretty solid tournament. Everyone has you know a few good guys, and you know you get some good matches there. So it should be interesting to see how that uh, see how it fares without those teams there this year. So I'm gonna ask a question. I really don't know the answer. Maybe you guys do. I have no clue. Is there like a sm- like a bigger uh, group of smaller teams in Fort Wayne than? I was trying to think like of the smaller teams in Northwest Indiana, and I don't think we have a ton of them. But, like, is there more smaller teams out east? Because it seems like they're pretty well represented. I'm not trying to get Dust, Dustin fired up and talk about the south again. <laughs> but I know, like, probably what would be the best two-way team, or one of the, I don't want to say the best two-way team, but one of the best two-way teams chooses to wrestle in the 4A division. Modern day would be a two-way, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. They might even be – they might even be 1A, technically. For, um, for the way they do it, but yeah, there are more, there are more one and two A schools in, in the Fort Wayne semi state. Okay. For what, um, for what you, I mean, what you're saying. So yes, um, it's just the way it. Uh, I like that the dirty thirty, dirty route thirty, dirty Mary Hobart, <laughs> Simon Valpo. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So the, yeah, there are a lot of lot of uh, just smaller schools. I think I I did the stats one time, and it was you know it kind of tells why Fort Wayne's a little up and down at times because everyone's kind of spread out. Everyone is, you know, we're not spread out like the South, but we are spread out, and it's a lot of rural schools. I mean, there's a lot like Jay County is the only school in the county. Um, Blackford, which is a pretty small county over in that area, they only have one high school, and that's like a tiny school. So there's a lot of like count uh, Huntington, Huntington North. That's the only school in the county there. So there's a lot of just county only schools. I think that's like one of the cool things is like I don't really know. Uh, one, I didn't know okay, Met was a smaller school when I went there. But it was like, well, you guys did well for a small school. What are you talking about? And then you see other schools that have you know four thousand kids, and we had like <laughs> seven hundred maybe. Yeah. Um, maybe, and that's like starting off, and then kids you know quit and get expelled. <laughs> but um i think uh like i think that's always one of the cool things is like to see how big this, this i thought beach grove was much bigger i yeah i always did too until i saw the numbers i'm like wow because they had a lot of success back in like dustin and i's day you know you, you would have thought that they were a perry meridian size even even yeah they're a lot you know even about a thousand students and they're probably six seven hundred or something like that so yeah. The other thing I like is like whenever uh, like in the Prairie Champions, when I'm trying to guess what schools I haven't seen them before, like what their colors are gonna be, and then I'm like totally blown away. Like sometimes I'm like, man, that's what their school wears, huh? I never guessed that. <laughs> it's it, it was like it. Uh... Was it like Green Green Central Greenfield? Or not Greenfield Central, but uh, Green Castle. They're like purple. Yeah. Why yeah. did you think that they'd be green? Yeah. <laughs> They, they throw you for a loop every time. 
Yeah, I always it was like at uh, Iron Man. You know, when you go to all these tournaments in Indiana, you kind of have a grasp of what teams everyone is. And I'm like, what, where's it? Who is this guy? He's wrestling. And, go, and then I'm like, where's that school from? They're like Oregon. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> I got that guy's from Oklahoma. Yeah. Oh, so we had to get on a plane to get here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't just drive. They they they, they took this plain thing in Majigger to an to, to a high school wrestling event during the season. Yeah. No, that was Man, I, I was just having that talk uh with one of the parents on our softball team. They were coming from a team where they were having to get like four four plane trips in the summer to go play tournaments. And I'm just thinking like I don't make bad money, but I don't know if I get on like every weekend playing money. <laughs> like I think for me the the, the mud m- the mud hens are uh is that what the, the Madison Mud Hens? Is that what, or Mad Mud Cats? Mud Cats. Mud Cats. Yeah. Are you guys taking flights to places? No, we are not taking <laughs> flights to places. <laughs> we do a family, and this is even like crazier to me. She played on a team in California. They practice once a month, and she'd jump on a plane and fly out there. At fourteen, I'm like, I don't even want my kids to walk around the block. Really, at like six. <laughs> my kids about to start driving, and I'm like terrified. <laughs> No, just send them on a, fl- a flight by themselves <laughs> across yeah. the country. <laughs> yeah, now that's yeah. So, so yeah, the the mud, mud cats don't have their private a private jet yet, or what? No, no, we're we're lacking down here in good old Madison. We're just <laughs> we work on boats and things more than planes. So, <laughs> so you guys got a cruise ship or what? <laughs> right, we take we take the pontoon boat on the river to tournaments. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> nice. Pontu, you got a parade of pontoon boats going to your tournament down the river. <laughs> <laughs> you mud cats. So yeah, um, yeah. No, that's yeah. That, that's always fun when you see those random teams and seeing what you know. Yeah, you always see like, hey, what what are those teams? You know, you never you don't know their colors or what their singlets look like, and you have to do a double take of, well, I know that's Perry, I know that's Warren, but. I don't know who this team is, you know. And every now and every now and again, they want to mess you up and throw out a, like a, "Hey, well, Friday night we're gonna wear a throwback." Yes. <laughs> but some of us are getting so old in the game that we remember those other singers from the you know two thousands. Who uh, who was it that the Danny uh, the Knox wrestler? Um, Danny Bradley, man. Danny Bradley. Yeah, Didn't he wear like a Team Indiana singlet one on like Friday night the one year? He did. And I think he tried to. I, th- I thought you were trying to rat him out, say he couldn't do it. <laughs> He got away with it, you know. Man, he ran that to a, a, a state runner-up. Man, that was wild. Yeah, yeah, he was pretty good. He was fun, you know. Bass Lake representing. <laughs> Max High School. Yes. Yep. I remember. I was like, "What single is that?" And it wasn't even like because Knox wasn't even like that color. I'm like, uh, "That's an Indian team, Indiana single." I guess. Yeah, you do what you do want to do at uh, state. What are they gonna do? Kick you out, or help if you just got a big banner that you could carry to really. <laughs> like, that's that's what every school should probably do. Has is, is, do you know where that is? is? Has that um, have you seen it lately? Yeah, it's still around. Are you sure? It's got a lot of dust on it because it hasn't been broken out in a few years, but it's still around. Are, are you so sure it's still around? It this year, are you guys gonna bring it back to the parade or what? Dude, Joe stole it. I don't know. Joe's <laughs> <laughs> I may have it behind me. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> you, would you kill me if I if you just like saw that in the background of my uh of my <laughs> I guess I'd have to come to Victory Bay then and see what's going on. <laughs> Maybe that if I if I get down to Madison, that's I'm gonna go like incognito and get that thing and just put it in. <laughs> it wouldn't it wouldn't be the first thing that was stolen at the state finals, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, yeah. <laughs> At least I can want to get DQ'd. Yeah, <laughs> man. So that's still such a wild story. Yeah. Anyway, any other? Uh, and Dustin just up and left. Oh no, he's. It says it time for me to go to bed, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Cashing it in. So any we... other? Uh, I mean, we'll have you on round semi-state time because you you always get fired up for the, the Evansville semi-state. Any uh, words of wisdom before we part ways? No, man. Thanks for having me. It's going to be a great year. Excited. Uh, get your re- reservations early for the Evansville Semi-State. Don't, ma- don't wait around. And 
I look for maybe I'll come back before then. Maybe something else will happen. I'll get fired up, you know. <laughs> we'll come back and have more chats. So. We can only have fired up, uh, fired up Dustin on here. So, oh yeah, T, uh, state next year will either be in Fort Wayne or Evansville. What where do, would you rather it be? <laughs> Why can't we have it in the region? <laughs> because it smells. Amos Center applied for, but they didn't get it. I heard. <laughs> 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 I don't even know if we have a venue like Maryville High School. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, well, man, that'd be you guys would be in for a real treat. <laughs> that that back? Oh boy, I miss Maryville High School. You guys, you guys are bringing up a sore subject. I don't know if we have a venue like I would say Mackey Arena, but like how big is Mac? Can Mackey hold it? Um, probably. But yeah, I, I know what Rob, Rob, Robert said is like he. They explored like Mackey and um, and Assembly Hall, but they they won't know their schedule for a while, so they won't know if they're you know the Big Ten schedule. So you got to schedule a two day event, basically three days, you know, um, around their schedule. I mean, you can't you know who knows if they're going to have a game, and they can't they they have no they have very little say in their schedule, so and they're big 10 schedule so it's like you can't you can't play that game so is there both a pepsi arena it'll be at either pepsi or the coliseum the the pepsi the fort center yeah. fort center yeah the fort center yeah fort center and then the fort wayne coliseum so but both are pretty similar from what i've seen from pictures and stuff um well, the so, ultimate tiebreaker is who has the closest bars you can go to in between rounds so we we'll need a permission from both schools we took the girls to our WWE wrestling event at the Coliseum one time. You get up the highway, there's some uh, some neon signs. <laughs> there's neon, neon signs neon right signs across the street. From, going on. They're, they're right across the street from Fort Wayne. <laughs> how, how many? There's about six on the way in, right? <laughs> there's a, there's a few. So yeah, I mean, I mean, Fort Center has like a cat petting place across the street. You can go pet cats. <laughs> What they actually? Get. Yeah, it's like a cat bar, a uh, cat den or something. You can go relax and pet a uh, like a cat. Like one of the girls on our team did. She said, "I'm gonna go pet a cat. You guys wanna go?" I'm like, I thought it was the weirdest thing, and then she sent pictures, and it looked really fun. <laughs> hey, is that true, Dustin? Is that where you? Is that why you like going to Evansville Semi State? Never heard of that in my life. I don't. Uh, I don't know. I think they have one in Maryville too. Uh, I did go. When we were in Evansville a couple of years ago, I did go to some of the spots that uh, Hook and Half recommended. That was okay. pretty cool. Yeah. I went to the, what's the uh, German place? Girl's oh, house. Yeah. It was good. I had a pig I had a knuckle. triple D meet and greet there one year. <laughs> did you have the pig knuckle? That's where I met Hook and Half. I mean, that's where I met Hook and Half at. We did a triple D meet and greet at that German bar. Yeah. The pig knuckle was decent. I'm not going to lie. I didn't know what it was, but it was good. I'd actually really not, not like to know what it is. Gert's <laughs> house. Gert's house, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It was good. That one's like an old bank or something. Is that the one that's owned by like a former modern day wrestler? No, that that's like it's a breakfast closed. place. Yeah, it's closed. I went. I tried to go there last year. I went to like the Megadeth Cafe too. It was like right down the street from like uh, Gert's house. It was pretty decent. I think they got sued though because I don't think they had anything to do with actual Megadeth. <laughs> <laughs> copyright infringement <laughs> yeah they had a picture of Ernie in there and everything <laughs> nice so but anyway we're gonna get out of here we will see you next Monday ish maybe I don't know have a Merry Christmas enjoy yep. the snowpocalypse if yep. your kid go out and make some money shovel some driveways yeah have uh, everyone have a great Christmas hopefully Santa brings you everything you want um Hopefully you get your Christmas shopping done before Christmas Eve, like me. So <laughs> I got well, hey, I got one submitted Christmas list. Hold on, from Columbus East, put us in Team State. <laughs> on Amazon, they're delivering up the Christmas. Yeah, they've been good boys this past year. <laughs> Man, you know what the worst part of this whole thing is? Like we're gonna have to see Coop and those guys at Al Smith, and I don't want to see an angry Cooper. I like a happy Cooper. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we we brought we brought him a representative on the show, so he we, he's got to be happy with us. Someone the, the voice of the South, the mouth right. of the South, the voice of injustice, the voice the man of the people. Of the people. <laughs>
Yeah. And, and preaching, you know, for, you know, changes. And there will be changes. So That's right. Maybe, maybe you should, you know, join the coaches association. Thus, then you can ha- – your voice will be heard right. louder. I know Mike's not a member of the coaches association. How so do you know that? <laughs> now that I know he's on that board, I expect the next invite to win. Anybody out there, Ratliff, anybody struck, hey – how am I not on this voting board? I mean, this is ridiculous. How do you know I'm not paying some dues? <laughs> huh? How do you know I'm not here paying dues on the low? I'll, I'll send my dues in if it gets me on this board to, to right the wrong and to be the voice of the sound. <laughs> send in your no resume. Boys. We need the best teams. Let's go. Send in uh, your resume. To uh, you need a uh, you need a. Uh, Struck's email address. <laughs> After multiple years of submitting a resume to the ISWA and the Coach Association, I've given up. I'm just going to ref and, and not worry about any of that any of that stuff. So <laughs> this year we're going to call state duels the IHSWCA duels. There's no state attached to it. Oh and man, don't do that because I said that before, and I thought I thought me and Dan were at the fight. He was so <laughs> mad when I said that. <laughs> don't say that, man. I, yeah, I made a blog point. post. It was. If you have extra points, Madison, January 7th, we'll, we'll crown the real estate champ down here on the river. <laughs> I guess that year, like, uh, Cathedral won, and man, I don't think Dane talked to me for about five months. <laughs> <laughs> I was not offered a hams, if that's what you guys were wondering. <laughs> nice. Oh, geez. So, okay, well, we're going to get out of here. Have a good Christmas, everyone, and we'll see you guys Merry Christmas. probably Merry Christmas. Monday-ish. Uh, let me get off here. There we go.